I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though this body be destroyed, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself. And mine eyes shall behold, and not another. He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Please stand for our opening hymn in the blue hymnal, hymn 382. page 517 of the Book of Common Prayer in the Maroon Book in front of you. We shall read Psalm 27. We will read this psalm breaking at the half verse asterisk. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? One thing have I desired of the Lord, which I will require. Even that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the fair beauty of the Lord, and to visit his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in the tabernacle. Yea, in the secret place of his dwelling shall he hide me. And now shall he lift up my head above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his dwelling an oblation with great gladness. I will sing and speak praises unto the Lord. Hearken unto my voice, O Lord, when I cry unto thee. Have mercy upon me and hear me. My 
heart hath talked of thee. Seek ye my face. Thy face, Lord, will I seek. O hide not thou thy face from me. Nor cast thy servants away in displeasure. Thou hast been my succor. Leave me not, be neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. I should utterly have fainted. But that I believe verily to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. O tarry thou the Lord's leisure. Be strong, and he shall comfort thy heart. And wilt thou trust the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. And now on page 521, we shall say Psalm 23 together, as was Alex's wish. The top of page 521. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Please remain standing for our gospel lesson. Alex's grandson, Wesley, is going to read our gospel text. Jesus said, Not let your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And if you, and, excuse me, and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may also may be also and whether I go ye know and the way ye know Thomas saith unto him Lord we know not whether thou goest and how can we know thy way Jesus saith unto him I am the way the truth and the life and no man cometh unto the Father but by me this is the word of the Lord thanks be to God our sermon hymn is in the blue hymnal, page 549.
be seated. Alexander Grindley, formerly of Port Washington, New York, passed away on March 3rd, 2024, after a courageous battle with cancer. He was a loving husband, father, grandfather, brother, and friend. His departure has left an immeasurable void in our lives and his memory will be forever etched in our hearts. Alex shared 64 wonderful years with the love of his wife, Nancy. He is survived by his three daughters, Nancy Grindley and Lou Abrams of Crested Butte, Colorado, Beth and Wes Walton of San Francisco, and Amy Iozo of Las Vegas, Nevada, and his three grandchildren, Garrett, Wesley, and Ethan. Alec was born in Glasgow, Scotland, the son of the late Alexander and Jesse Grinley, and he is predeceased by his sisters Margaret and Eleanor. Alec was a graduate of Lehigh University where he received his bachelor degree in civil engineering. He earned his master's degree in aeronautics and in astronautics from University of Washington. And Alec worked in both the private and public sectors. His final job was as a computer scientist for the Department of the Navy. He retired and moved to Montrose, Colorado, so he could enjoy camping, hiking, and fishing. His other interests were ballroom dancing and traveling with his beloved wife, Nancy. St. John chapter 5, 24 states, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. When Alec came into our lives here at St. Stephen's Church, he was in many ways returning to the churchmanship of his youth in Scotland. Finding very little of the traditional elements of Reformation worship in the Presbyterian churches that he visited here in Colorado, he found a home in the other branch of the British Reformation, the Anglican Episcopal tradition, where the familiar hymns, theology, and a form of service were still retained. And I often discuss the history of Scotland with Alec and the influence that the Scottish and the Ulster Irish had in the early history of the United States. Usually while eating Scottish shortbread cookies, by the way. <laughs> I always, he always kept them on hand in case I came by for a visit. The parson might come, get the Scottish shortbread out. I already miss my conversations with Alec on these topics. Alec on many occasions would tell me that he still had his prize for perfect Sunday school attendance from the Kirk of Scotland parish where his family attended in Glasgow. And then while stopping by for a visit one afternoon, he took it off the shelf to show it to me. And then he spoke about the post-war situation in the United Kingdom when he was growing up and the indelible mark that the hymns he remembered from his youth had on him. Most especially, and everybody who's a member of St. Stephen's would know this, he loved onward Christian soldiers. What struck me and even surprised me to some degree about Alec as I got to know him better was his real zeal for being a soldier of Christ. He had an earnest attitude about inviting people to church and sharing his faith with those around him. His choice of the sermon hymn that we just sung a moment ago, Nearer My God to Thee, which was at least from my personal perspective and experience with Alec, characteristic of the years that he spent with us, those years that I was privileged to know him myself. And of course, the naval hymn was his preference for our processional hymn for this evening. The hymn written by Anglican minister of Clapham in London, William Whitting, who could write, for God's hand of protection over the armed forces, but also of the effective power of God's word, 
Verse 2 of that hymn, O Christ, whose voice the water heard and hushed their raging by his word, who walked upon the foaming deep and give for mild confusion peace. O hear us when we cry to thee for those in peril on the sea. Well, this verse denotes the peace that God's word brings to those in the mild confusion of our transitory life on earth. Pointing to the giver of that word, who is that redeemer, as the song states, who is strong to save. This is what Alec wished us to think upon this evening as we remember him, that there is an eternal father strong to save. And so it is my privilege to once again state the word of God from the Lord who is indeed strong to save over the remains of our brother Alexander. John 5, verse 24, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with thy spirit. spirit. We continue on page 526. And you can remain seated for our prayers, or you can kneel if you so wish. Let us pray. 526, and we begin with that prayer that our Lord taught us to pray, we pray this together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O God, whose days are without end, and whose mercies cannot be numbered, make us, we beseech thee, deeply sensible of the shortness and uncertainty of human life. And let thy Holy Spirit lead us through this veil of misery, in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. That when we shall have served thee in our generation, we may be gathered unto our fathers, having the testimony of a good conscience and the communion of thy church, in the confidence of a certain faith, in the comfort of a reasonable religious and holy hope, in favor with thee, our God, and in perfect charity with the world, all which we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful Father, who has been pleased to take unto thyself the soul of this thy servant, Alexander, grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that having served thee with constancy on earth, we may be joined hereafter with thy blessed saints in glory everlasting through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember thy servants, O Lord, according to the favor which thou bearest upon thy people, and grant that we together with those who rest in thee shall increase in knowledge and love of thee, and go from strength to strength in the life of perfect service in thy heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Almighty and most merciful God, the consolation of the sorrowful and the support of the weary, who dost not willingly grieve or afflict the children of men, look down in tender love and pity, we beseech thee upon thy bereaved servants, especially Nancy and the Grimley family, whose joy is turned into mourning, so that while they mourn, they may not murmur or faint under the chastening hand. But remembering all thy mercies, thy promises, and thy love in Christ, they resign themselves meekly into thy hands to be taught and comforted by thee, who bringest life out of death, and who canst turn their grief into eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord our God, who art the disposer of human events, in whom we live and move and have our being, we beseech thee to grant us that sense of thy presence, which will enable us to see that thy wisdom and love are involved in this dispensation of thy providence. May we remember that thou art all wise and canst not make a mistake, that thou art also all love and canst not be cruel to any of thy children. So 
So help us to believe that all things are working together for our good, and that what we know, not now, we shall hereafter fully know and understand. And sanctify to us this ordering of thy providence. Comfort and uphold thy servants in this hour of their sorrows. Impart to them thy sufficient and sustaining grace, distilling in every wounded heart the solace of thy Holy Spirit. And when thy summons shall come to us, vouchsafe, O Lord, that having trusted in the atoning work of thine only begotten Son, our Savior, we may be received into thy presence where there is fullness of joy forevermore. Through the same, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all forevermore. Amen. Amen. Please rise for our closing hymn, which is hymn 578.
Nancy and the family are here to, to receive you. There is a bell. God bless.